national identity. Alright, so for the trade promotion, okay, this one I have explained to you lah, like the government give financial assistance to the domestic producer in various ways, including cash grant, low interest, loan, tax break, pengecualian cukai, and product price support. Uh, no okay, eh? uh, yeah? uh, problem uh, no, just now uh, we can hear your voice. Uh, oh, window. Nampak, you refer on your slide lah. So talking about the okay. subsidy. Okay, subsidy is the financial assistance of the government to the domestic producer for the local business in the form of cash grant, okay, pengecualian cukai, uh, low interest, interest loan. Okay, this is to help the local producer to compete with the foreign competitors. Usually the foreign competitor is the well-established multinational company. Lah. So that's why the government need to protect the local producer. Lah. But the not good thing about subsidy here uh, this will allow the inefficient local firm to stay in business. Not all local firm are good. Okay, if they are being pampered too much by the government, they will not have the initiative to improve the quality of their product. Okay, and then they would not care to find a way to reduce the price for customer. So at the end, we as the customer will absorb the high price. Lah. Government gives subsidy to them. Okay, but at the end, the price of the product become expensive. We as a customer yang kena bayar, we have to pay for the high price. Okay. And then for export financing. Export financing. All right. Export financing. Government promote exports. Export is we are selling our product to foreign country. Okay. Kita jual. Okay. So that's why government will definitely promote how they want to promote the local company to export okay, by giving loans and loan guarantee. So they have a special agency. As you can see from the slide here, uh, in US, they have the Export Import Bank and Overseas Private Insurance Corporation, OPIC. Uh, if in Malaysia, we have the Export Import Bank of Malaysia, Azim Bank. Okay. Azim Bank was incorporated with the role of delivering financing and takaful solution for cross-border venture. Okay. Because if you want to export, besides you need to have some finance, okay, you have to pay money for transportation, for custom, immigration. You also need to have some insurance lah, uh, to protect your product that are being sent to overseas as well. Lah. So that's why you need to have a guarantee, a support from the special import-export bank, lah, Exim Bank. Okay. Number three is foreign trade zone. Okay, atau singkatan, the short form. Uh, tak dengar pula. We can't hear you just now. Now okay ya. Eh? Okay. FTZ. Okay. FTZ is the uh, designated geographic region in which a merchandise is allowed to pass through with lower custom duty or tax. Okay. Uh, dia macam kawasan bebas cukai lah. Okay. A custom duty usually okay, is not favor because it will increase the cost of your product. Okay. Bila product masuk, when the product uh, uh, good from overseas enter into this free trade zone. Okay, so this will reduce a lot of uh, uh, formality lah because it is very easier. FTZ, the shipment are very fast because there is less formality or custom strict examination. Okay, and the good actually can be stored and handled very quickly lah. Okay, the zone are sometimes are called as special economic zone. Kalau di Malaysia, in Malaysia we have the plot Port Klang, Free Zone, Kulim, High Tech. In China, they have their Huawei, Free Trade Zone, Zijiang, Free Trade Zone. Uh, all these Free Trade Zone are being favoured lah by people who want to enter into, let's say, our country. Uh, they will actually stop by at this Port Klang, Free Zone lah. Uh, senang, custom, custom, uh, very flexible, okay, and they can actually reduce their cost. 
Okay, and then we have the special government agency. So government will set up a special agency that offer a lot of assistance, especially for exporter from Malaysia. Okay, they, they nak galakkan. Because when we export, remember, money inflow into our country lah. So in Malaysia, we have Madrid. Just now I have meeting my head of department say uh, we will have a collaboration with Madrid. Uh, Madrid is very close with international business lah because they are involved in the national trading, okay, import-export activity. So they will promote the Malaysia export okay, by having, uh, by giving assistance for the local company to survive in the global market. Okay, so instrument for trade restriction pula. Last minute, so restriction. Okay, instrument of trade restriction, we have one here is the import tariff. Michelle, ada tak Michelle Chang? Yes, doctor. Ha, terang apa yang you faham tentang import tarif ni? Nama pun uh, import tarif. So, maksudnya? Uh, import tarif ni, dia uh, uh, cukai import. Cukai yang dikenakan ke atas barangan? Uh, atas barangan import, ya. Yeah. Okay, so apa kebaikan? What are the advantages or the benefit of import tariff? Uh, this one will become one uh, a part of the income of government. Okay, what are the disadvantage of import tariff? This will uh, menaikkan harga barang import. Siapa yang suffer? When the import product price become higher, so who will suffer? Who will bear? Uh, the consumer will suffer. Yes, the consumer will bear lah the consequences. Okay, government and the local producer will be happy lah because the price of the import product become expensive. Government get income. The local producer can survive. But we as the consumer will have to bear the high price lah. Okay, so this import, uh, import tariff. Okay, import tariff. I have three types here. One is the specific tariff one is at volume and last one is the compound tariff so in terms of this uh mana dia okay this is my example lah about the specific tariff so, nama pun specific lah. The word specific here. Okay, it will be specific that can be measured in terms of the quantity, the number of product or the weight of the product. Okay, uh, paling senang you ingat uh, the quantity lah, the number of product. So, $3 will be charged, tariff will be charged for one barrel of uh, cooking oil, for example. Or 300 ringgit tariff will be charged on one computer that are imported into Malaysia. Okay, yang dibelilah, dimasuk, nak masuk ke negara Malaysia. So, this is what we call specific tariff. Okay. On the other hand, volume. So, just now, we boleh kira the thing that we can count lah. 1, 2, 3 or 10 kilo, 20 kilogram, uh, ton. That one is specific tariff. But at volume means we will calculate the tariff based on percentage. Peratusan. 8 to 30 percent will be charged on the import of foreign steel. Ha, yang ni lah yang tadi I bagi tahu. 2002, the US government during the George Bush president lah, leadership at that time, they have imposed at volume tariff 8 to 30 percent. 30 percent is quite high lah. Very high for the import of foreign steel. So that's why the automobile maker at that time very upset lah force us to buy the US steel. Okay. Previously, we buy from foreign country, okay, very cheap. Now, you force us, force to charge the tariff now because expensive. So, the price of car also will increase. But for the last one, for compound, compound is combination of specific and equilibrium. Campur. Combine both of these. Okay. When they calculate interest, uh, interest pula, the tariff, okay, the tax, there will be two columns. Uh, one is the uh, based on the specific by quantity, 
and they will add another one based on the percentage. Ini memang adalah later maybe when you learn sport or logistic, especially for BIBM student, you can see ya, there will be document whereby there was the specific tariff or compound tariff. This one they charge both, they include both at volume and specific. And number two here is quota. Okay, quota. Siapa? <coughs> Farid Firdaus, ada tak? Farid? Mana Farid? Farid tak ada. Uh, mana? Tak nampak? Uh, boleh terang, boleh terang apa masuk kuota? Kuota... Um... Saya kan selalu dengar what is kuota. Tutup, nampak. masuk kuota. Kuota ni uh, dia macam uh, tertentu yang boleh masuk ke dalam negara. Untuk apa, apa dia? Tertentu. Apa tertentu? Ah uh, jumlah kuantiti tertentu. Ah uh, jumlah kuantiti boleh masuk dalam sesebuah negara. Okay. Okay. From your slide there you can see the restriction on the amount or the quantity lah. Quantity can be unit or berat or weight. Okay, wait dia tak kira yang ringan-ringan lah, dia kira tone, 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 tone. Of good that they can enter or leave a country during a certain period of time. Okay, like US, they will set quota on the import cheese. Okay, because they also have the local producer in US that also produce cheese. So that's why they will set up quota restriction on the amount of the cheese that can enter into their country. Okay, so putting quota here. It's not good because bila ada kuota, when there is kuota, that means the number of the product will be very limited. So everything, when the number is limited, the price will rise. Harga dia akan tinggi lah. Benda yang limited-limited ni, harga dia tinggi. Okay. When there is a lot, the price will be reduced lah. But when the limited number of product, so the price of the good will increase. And actually domestic producer also will take advantage to raise up their price. Okay, to expand their production. Penduduk, ah, penduduk pula. Ah. The local producer pun ambil kesempatan lah. Nak naikkan harga lah. Okay. Domestic producer actually will win because of market protection. But consumer will lose because of the higher price. Macam yang cheese tadi. Yang you asked how they set up the quota. Is by giving uh, import license to certain group only to, to uh, import cheese into US. Kalau dia allow semua banyak, if they allow many company to import cheese, there will be too much lah. So, they only give license to, to certain company only. Okay, so that the number will be reduced. Beside the import kuota, export kuota pun ada. Okay, I pun, I thought, eh, I thought import nanti. Why export want to kuota? Okay, export give money what? But export kuota is also being imposed because the government want to protect the Natural resources of the country. Okay. Contohnya, uh, the resources uh, is very limited in that country. Okay. If they export a lot to foreign country, lastly, the resources, the natural resources will finish. Contohnya macam diamond lah. Right. The, uh, Africa country, they have a lot of diamond. So, if let's say all the export, export la later on, there will be no more diamond lah. So, that's, that's why they need to put some quota. Okay, or barangan-barangan uh, uh, antique, antique or his, historical product, okay, that is very valuable. Uh, so that's why they need to put some quota lah. If not, this thing is considered as very valuable to their country. So that's why they need to put quota on that lah. Alright, so number, berapa dah? Tiga, embargo. Embargo. Macam tak apa nak nampak student lelaki-lelaki. Dah Farhan Daniel pula. Ada tak Farhan Daniel? Mana Farhan Daniel? Goreng kotiaw ke Farhan? Mana? Ada? 
Farhan Daniel. Unmute, unmute. Tak ada. Lepas ni siapa tak jawab lah. Hmm. Ay, buang balik nama dia. Jaiprit ada Jaiprit. Jaiprit call. Yes, Dr. I'm here. Okay, Jaiprit, can you explain to us what is embargo from your own understanding lah for you faham? Um, based on my understanding, embargo is an official ban from a country to another country, especially like um, for nuclear things like that, to make sure that the home country doesn't get any harm from the other specific country. Tengok macam mana penerangan Jaipit begitu lengkap dan detail sekali. Baca ke ataupun memang, uh, memang you tahu? Uh, before the class, I do baca but I actually know about Margo, so yeah. Margo kan. Uh, this one general lah. Sepatutnya you all know lah. This is very common common thing lah that actually you should know about import tariff, kuota, embargo. So here from your slide, okay, uh, it's a official ban and order of a government. I think just now I give example that the US lah, okay, that uh, prohibit to have any international trade activities with this one particular country that I give to you just now, Cuba, and another one is North Korea. Okay, and uh, mentioned by Jaipri just now, uh, it might uh, uh, involve a production of uh, harmful product lah, like uranium, okay, ballistic missile, which can actually harm their country. So for the embargo here, the government imposed prohibition of trading or exchanging goods or services with this certain country. Lah. Okay. Uh, like uh, the Cuba just now, uh, US imposed embargo because the violation of human rights okay, that have been done by the communist government during the Fidel Castro's regime. Yeah, the ke -ke 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 lah. okay, violation. Okay, this is, uh, they use the, the, Justification is to protect the human right. Not only US, the other country around the world also should stop international trade with Cuba or North Korea. Many countries impose sanctions against North Korea because they are concerned with North Korea nuclear weapon program. And kita selalu baca paper, we always read newspaper or somewhere in the internet that the North Korea, uh, they always launch this, uh, launching the nuclear weapon which actually will harm the maybe the neighboring countries lah okay, the leader kim jong un satu okay so dia nak bagi suffer lah they want to the north korea suffer lah in terms of the economics okay one another example they they what they did is the oil embargo okay petrol or oil is very important so they cut the oil supply to north korea so this will actually will slow down lah the economic and also their military activity Okay. Local content requirement. Jacqueline Jipanus. Sikit lagi. Sampai currency content. Jacqueline ada? Jacqueline. Tak ada? Siapa? Ni semua tak ada ni. Izzahar Isa ada tak? Izzahar Isa. Ya. Yeah. Oh, semangat. Hello. Mana tak nampak rupa ada kat mana tu? Ha? Kat, kat, ada kat Param ke kat rumah ni? Ah, uh, rumah kat tu. Uh, okay, terangkan apa you what do you understand by local content requirement? Ya, ada. Di mana? Okay, uh, the local is the uh, government demand that some specific fraction of to be the good provision or domestic Yalah, dia baca kat situ. Cuba terang ha. sendiri. So, mana pula? Saya tak berapa faham sangat, Doktor. Macam mana baca tu tak faham? Uh, dia macam ni, Doktor. Ha. The government demands ha. uh, dia more to specific fraction of the good. Untuk hasilkan satu, untuk hasilkan uh, di dalam domestik. Maksudnya dalam negara tu. Hasilkan apa? Hasilkan apa? Hmm. Barangan tu tu? Barangan. Produk. Itu dia orang suruh baca. Macam ke tak baca secara jujurnya? 
Ha? Secara jujurnya tadi kan lecturer kata baca na, lagi saya nak tanya soalan. Baca ke tak baca? Saya baca yang atas-atas doktor. Tapi yang part ni saya tak faham. Tak faham. Tinggal tu no? sebab tak faham. Ha, tak apa lah. Ha, tak apa. Jadi cuba. At least cuba na. Alright. Terus apa dia tak? Nama Izzah. Okay so thank you Izzah. Tak apa lah. At least dia cuba kan daripada hak tak menjawab langsung tu. Okay. So in terms of apa local content. Sekejap. Betul betul. Okay, local content uh, requirement. Okay, for example, like US. US, they also buy the automobile, like say Honda lah, Honda from Japan. Okay, so what the US government did is, they uh, will, will ask the uh, Honda company, okay, to use some of the parts of the car, maybe 50% ke, 50%. Okay, you have to use the parts and component from the US local producer. You can sell or export your car, your Honda car to US, but the 50% of the parts and component of the Honda must come from the US producer. Ni yang kita panggilkan local content requirement. Uh, dia macam uh, satu uh, satu oh, nak kata lupa lah. Dia macam Malaysia lah, made in Malaysia to encourage for using the made in Malaysia product. So what they did here is to encourage for using the made in US product. Okay, but here they will make uh, some uh, requirement lah. Okay, you want to sell, okay. But 50% of the car component part everything must buy from the US local producer. Okay, usually they will buy lah. This part from Taiwan, this part from Malaysia, from Thailand. Uh, but when this happen, what happen is the final product has become expensive lah because 50% of the parts and component come from US that what we know, usually the price is more expensive. Uh, usually the US, uh, sorry, the Japan company will follow lah because they want to sell their product in US market. Okay. And the... Second last, yeah. the second last here is the administrative policy. Okay, it's a bureaucratic rules that are designed to make it difficult for import company to enter into a country. Okay, ini maksudnya prosedur-prosedur uh, uh, yang melecehkan lah. Uh, very troublesome, a lot of red tips, very slow, very hassle. Okay, the master of this administrative delay is Japan. Okay, Japan are the master of this barrier. What they did is the custom inspection in in Japan is very hassle, menyusahkan, menyusahkan kehidupan. Because whenever product or goods enter into their country, so it will go to custom inspection. So the custom there will insist to open the package. Nak buka, nak check satu-satu, one by one, one by one. So what happened like Netherlands, they import the tulips. So the custom open and check the tulips one by one, one by one. Boleh lah, tulip is very fragile. So they need to be covered and make sure uh, temperature okay. But when open, the tulip will get spoiled lah. Okay, dia saja-saja buat. Uh, purposely do that. So be, when people have bad experience, administrative delay, red tape, very slow, streets, okay, custom inspection. Later on, people will be give up lah to, to export their product to Japan. Okay, nyusahkan lah. Okay, hard to get supply. Uh, at the end, yalah again the consumer will bear because it will be hard for them to get the supply. And lastly, the currency control here. Uh, usually what the government did is the currency for, if let's say the local company want to export, they will give a very favorable currency exchange rate lah. Okay, but let's say it involve company that want to import, uh, the yang apa, nak masuk negara kita lah, that want to enter.